Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So I thought I'd do a video talking about Newcastle United youth products. Um, it's come to me to think about some of the recent players that we've produced and how I feel we're doing. So we're going to look at um, some of the players that we've recently produced and see how what we feel in terms of how what they've achieved. So the two I'm going to start with are in goal. Um, Freddie Woodman. Um, Fraser Forster, I know Fraser Forster was a long time ago. So with Freddie Woodman, obviously he's gone on loan to Swansea. I think with Darlow's form and um, rise, it may mean that we basically can bring Freddie back at the end of his loan spell and let them two fight it out. I would, I think, Dubravko is an asset, but once you have a lot of strength in one position, it makes sense then to sell that if you are willing to reinvest. Obviously, we don't know if Ashley would reinvest the money, but I think for me, it makes sense to either bring Freddie Woodman back, let him fight with Darlow for the first team spot, and just let Dubravka go. Um, Dubravka is a great, is a good keeper, very commanding, probably a little bit more commanding than Darlow. He has made errors, and I don't think he's perfect, so I would let I would let Freddie Woodman fight out for a spot next year with Darlow. Um, and at least one year where he's fighting out, given a few opportunities to play. You know, And then if it doesn't seem like he's going to break through, then we may need to let him go for his own career sake, really. I mean, he shot to fame when they won the um, Under-20 World Cup. So I think it would make sense for us to give him a chance at least. With Fraser Forster, I think he made the decision earlier in the year not to go back to Celtic and stay Southampton fight for a spot. He's probably on a good salary, probably doesn't want to leave Southampton. Um, he's a player who, again, was very unlucky that at the time we had lots of good keepers um, present. So, yeah, those are two. Looking at some of the players we've produced in our defence, um, Dummett had a lot of injuries, looked like he might not play um you know, was out for a good few months. Um, he's come back. Uh, for me, Dummett in the moment in a three-five-two can definitely play as one of the three centre backs. I've actually always thought he is actually a better centre back than a left back. Um, he definitely cannot play left wing back because he provides nothing going forward. And when he's at left back, he, I think under Rafa he was improving going forward. But I would definitely not play him as a left wing back. I think we would offer nothing going forward and. We're already struggling to create attacks, and it would be basically if he got the ball in an attacking position, it's end of move. So he's definitely won. Um, looking at centre backs, we haven't really produced um, many quality centre backs. If you think about it over the years, I mean, the ones I can think of are Stephen Taylor, who underachieved. I think if he'd had a Sir Bobby Robson for a long period of time, we may have seen a huge improvement. Obviously, even yeah, Bobby Robson gave him his debut, um, but he had so many different managers. I think him and Shola went through so many managers. You had Peter Ramage, Paul Huntington, um, but we haven't really produced many good centre-backs, if we're honest. Um, I'd say probably Dummett would be probably the best one, but yeah, a bit disappointing in terms of our centre backs. Um, looking at right backs, probably the one we produced was Jamie Sterry. Um, looked like he was going to get given a chance in the championship, but it never really um, worked for him. Obviously, we had Yedlin, Kamez um, at the time, and then in Anita, so he never really got a chance in at right back. Um, you know, that's one of those things. Looking at the centre mids, two probably players that we're talking about a lot at the moment. Um, Sean and Matty Longstaff. Um, Sean, I think we all can accept that he probably has really gone backwards. I think his confidence um, has been affected in recent weeks. Um, the mistakes he made against Leeds are just criminal. Um, and he hasn't really recovered since coming back from that injury. I think we had such high hopes for him, and he was in such a role, that when he came back from the injury, we were expecting him to do better and had high hopes. And it's almost like he did so well pre this knee injury um, with um, uh, that he has gone backwards. I don't, like, the thing I used to like would be he dictate the pace, his passing was very good, he was getting into forward positions, scoring goals. Now he just looks a shadow of that. 
and um, I think he, for me as well, he probably struggles in the two two man midfield. I don't I don't think I think he needs more protection. Um, Matty, I have a view that he may be he's very small, and he might struggle to impose himself physically. I think he's very busy, and I think he's trying really hard, and he does give, but sometimes he can get lost, and I think against. The top midfielders, he would get lost. And I remember last year when we played, I think it was Chelsea, and I just thought, he is nowhere near this game. He's not up to the quality, um, to be honest. So, yeah, he's another one. Looking at like forward players that we've produced in recent years, you've got the likes of Adam Armstrong, um, who's doing really well at Blackburn. Um, speak to a lot of Blackburn fans, um, say why did we let him go and everything like that. I feel he should have been given a chance in the championship. I, I, I believe that sometimes players just need one or two chances um, to really score a goal or go on a little run and they can establish first team players. Um, he's very quick, direct, can play wide. Um, he's one of those I wish we hadn't let go really. Um, I think a lot of fans are like me and feel probably Rafa should have given him a chance. Um, if you look at that season, I think we had Gail, Perez, Mitrovic and Murphy. Um, and I think he could have stayed around, really, because Perez was playing more of a number 10 role. But, you know, he never got that opportunity and it is frustrating. I mean, the other attacking players that we've produced, like Sir Sami Aniobi, who's had a decent championship, kind of League One career, um, I remember when Sammy first came through, we were very excited. This is why I don't think the Europa League is very strong. We played a quite quite a few Europa League group games, if you remember, under Pardew. And we were all like, wow, well, who is this guy? Look, he dribbles, he goes past people, he's unpredictable. But, you know, I think his inconsistency was clear to see. He just was never going to be strong enough or good enough to kind of make an impact for us and probably Championship League One is his level. Strikers, Nile Ranger, Ivan Tony is the one that we probably should not have let go. Um, looks like he is a heck of a player and I think he probably will follow the Ollie Watkins where he gets a big move this summer. Um, for me, I think he would be worth having a punt on. Um, he definitely cannot do any worse than Joe Linton. Um, I think he'd work well with Callum Wilson, and he would definitely be an upgrade on Joe Linton or Andy Carroll for that reason, because football, you need mobility. And the problem that I have with Andy Carroll is there's no, there's no movement anymore. Even when he was here first time out, he was technically very good in terms of his link-up play. And he had some good movement, and he's lost that with the injuries. I don't think he jumps as well, so I think his actual physical abilities are reduced as well. Um, and I think his confidence is a bit shot um, from like what's happened to him over the years. So for me, I mean, Armstrong and Tony probably would be players you would you know you'd look at. Um, Shola Amiobi, I'm also of the opinion that he was not very talented and everything like that. But again, he's someone like Stephen Taylor. I think he had so many managers that he was just never going to be able to progress because he was constantly changing. And one of the things I always, this is just my own personal opinion, I respect Kevin Keegan's view on Shola. And Keegan, when he came in straight away, said, this guy's not good enough. And he would have got rid of him, but then he, he got sacked and then we got a new manager and they gave Shola another chance. But like Keegan knew to play exciting entertaining football you can't do that with Sheryl on the team because he's so limited technically um so let me have let me know what you think of the video and um hope to hear your views tell me what you guys think about some of the youth products we've produced over the years